everything all right, Jonathan? Are you looking for someone? I'm supposed to bring this bread to our canter. He's spending the day up there on the roof of the cathedral. But how am I ever going to make it all the way up there? Ah, uh, afraid of heights, hmm? But do you want me to go? No, no. I'll make it. I just need time. I'm done for now. I'm done for now. I just can't stand looking at it anymore. Hey, take back what you said before. What? What did I say? Oh, come on. You, you know what you said. About Aliena? Why would you care if I take her as a wife? <laughs> you don't get it, do you? Who does he think he is? He's got it coming. Nah. I should hurry and go back to work, or Tom will get mad at me again. <laughs> he is much too young for that. Uh, I'm looking for a book, and before you ask, it's not the Bible. There are books in the scriptorium at the prior's house. Maybe you can find it there.
I'm done for now. I just can't stand looking at it anymore. I will do everything in my power to make sure you are paid. I know that you showed us mercy before, when we had to flee from Earl's castle. My husband has worked here ever since, and we would like to be close to Our Lady Aliena, but we have no choice. Oh, Mary. The same goes for us, Mary. We all owe Philip much. I trust you, Father, but I risk my neck up there every day. My wife is right. If you can't pay, we'll have to move on. Kingsbridge is our home. I don't want to leave. Let me think of something. Maybe there's a way we can pay your workers early, Philip. But selling the wool at the fleece fair will take at least a couple of days. I'm sorry, but me and the other workers can't wait that long. Not now that everything is so unsure. Trust me, Philip. I'll think of something. Jack! You said you weren't finished with your corbel. When I went by there, look finished to me. You need to learn to let go and move on. Don't get lost in the details. It's my corbel. None of this is ours. Doing the carvings is the only job you didn't give Alfred to screw up. We should be thankful of the work we're allowed to do. And in our work, we must be thorough and steadfast. Thankful for what we are allowed to do. You are the one who wouldn't settle for less than a cathedral. You could have had other work, but no. For months, you remained... ...steadfast, no matter the cost. When are you going to tell Jonathan about what happened in the forest? Ah, shouldn't have said that about Jonathan. Damn it. Good day, my ladies. Ha <laughs> ha, if it isn't handsome Jack. Have you come by to help, eh? <laughs> um, not really. Didn't think so. <laughs> After a day your hands start bleeding, piss and salt in the water will do that. Piss? Only way to get the grease and dirt from the wall. We can use a coin, but there's only so much pain you can take. Sooner or later, Aliena will have to look someplace else for Fuller's. I will find a way to help you with your hands. Well, as a start, then maybe you should get back to work as well. I'm just taking a break, all right?
Hmm, maybe one day we could build a mill that will do a fulling motion. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Ah, but then the fullers would be out of a job. But they were complaining about their hands, and there is probably other work for them. And Ali and Martha could sell even more cloth and save money on the fulling. I won't do it today, but hell, I have to try to build a fulling mill. I will build a fulling mill. Not just yet, but soon. I don't see the Bible. Even if I could find it, I doubt it would still be legible. <sighs> I will build. Do you mind? Oi, my hand! I just took a few. They aren't all your ants. will build a No. What am I doing here? That won't help me solve my problem with Alfred. I... I will build a... Brother Paul. And that is little Jack. You see, he never paid the bridge toll when he came here. Sometimes you must show clemency and let those in need pass into our town without asking for coin. I'll remember your words, Brother Paul. Uh, better not. Uh, better not. One is too old for the book, and the other is too young. Do you know a remedy for rough and dry hands? Uh, your mother would know, for sure. She is tending to her herbs right down that path to your left.
As much as I'd like to, I did promise Tom I'd only do my own carvings in the evenings. That is something I would rather not discuss with my mother. Discuss with my mother. I should probably continue working. Probably. Don't look so sad, Cub. We'll talk in the evening. The Fullers down in Kingsbridge are having trouble with their hands. I'm not surprised. I could only do it for a few days, even though Aliena paid well. Here, take this. Ouch! Stinging metal. <laughs> yes, and you need to crush it with a pestle and mortar, and then make a balm from it. Cuthbert had a mortar, I think. The Fuller's hands will improve for a while. But only for a while. If they want to stop their hands from suffering, they need to stop fulling. Maybe you're right. Thank you. Ah, there you are. I wanted to talk to you. What is it? I'm afraid there's a lot of trouble ahead of us. From what I heard from Tom, they're trying to shut down the construction. They? The Earl of Shiring. Tom is under a lot of stress. If it weren't for him, it would already be over. Why are you telling me this? Did he say something about me? No. But I know that he just can't stand to see you and Alfred arguing. Just don't see why Alfred gets to do everything he wants. Alfred is a master builder. You are an apprentice. There are rules. They may not be my rules, but they are yours. If you want to become a master builder. Mm, maybe. Don't be angry, Cobb. I'm not. Hey. <laughs> No. No. I can only think of one person that deserves to have ants crawling down his shirt.
Oh, hello again. Didn't you want to talk to Aliena? Maybe. I need to go. See you around, Jack. I've never seen him so sad. I've never seen... Now, let's see. Here we go. Oh. Then I thought I'm getting the hang of this. Yes. Just a little more. Good. And now, uh, what? Milius? Yes. Do you know how to make a bar? Indeed. All it takes is some hot fat and beeswax. Ah, thank you. You know, you really wouldn't make a bad monk, Jack. What, me? <laughs> I think that would be a problem. Why? You can read. You know about herbs and... You are good company. Is this supposed to be wine? What? Here, in the corner. No, it's vinegar. It's vinegar. That shouldn't be here. What was Cuthbert thinking? Oh, Lord. Give me the strength to endure this without chasing Brother Andrew from my kitchen. I don't think I would make a good monk. Why not? Philip thinks so too. He told me. Never mind, why. I don't need to be a monk to come around and talk to you, right? That is true. And I think I should get back to work soon. <laughs> Thank you for your help. The sub prior has to handle everything he neglects. Everything. As sub prior, I have even more responsibilities than the prior himself. And more worries. Just don't see how you can possibly regain our trust. Like heathens! You're not heathens, are you?
I'm looking for a book by Ovid. Oh, we saw some in Shiring and in Winchester. There are also a few copies in Salisbury, I believe. Which ones are you looking for? The Amores? Have you heard of that? Uh, that was one of the copies in Winchester, I think. Did you read it? Me? I... I, I don't remember. I, I... I don't remember. He did. Just a page or two. Sounds like the right book. And Winchester's not far. I should tell Ali what I found out. If only I had more time to read. Then you should know better! <laughs> I'd better keep at a distance. I don't want to be scolded too. We place our trust in you. We take you in. And this is how you thank us? I think Brother Arnaldo... Uh, he's not. Mm, that won't help me solve my problem Friar with Alfred. Philip is too forgiving. The sub prior has to handle everything he neglects. <laughs> I better keep it at it. Everything. As a sub prior, I have even more responsibilities than the prior himself. And more worries. Just don't see how... It's blocked. I have to go in through the front. Hmm, they have problems with their hands and feet. Maybe I can find a way to help them. Try this. Whenever did you find the time to make a bomb, handsome Jack? Don't you have work to do? Who would I be if I could just pass by ladies in need? <laughs> Does that mean you'll join us and do some filling? I have my own work to do, so that won't work, I'm afraid. Oh, of course. Suddenly you've got work to do. But I dare say, that bomb works. My hands feel much better. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies.
Come on, Jonathan. Let's tell Ali what I found out. Ranulf of Chester and his half-brother stole Lincoln Castle from Stephen. At least this is a chance for us to take it back. For us? Who is us? The whole of England is strangled by new taxes and torn apart by this senseless quarrelling. Senseless quarrelling? You still think I'm just playing around? No. I put my life at risk, Ali, for you and me. This isn't a game. I, I know that. Do you? It's an honor to be one of the King's Knights. An honor that costs a lot of money. Oh, now you broke it, Jonathan. There's someone at the door. I'll be right back. Oh. Go play. Jack. Hey. So? Yes. What brings you here? I... Do you have a, a visitor? Are you jealous? Everything all right there? Uh, yes, it will just take a minute. Sorry, but my brother is waiting. He has to ride back to Shiring soon. Ah, I see. All right. I just wanted to tell you that I found out about the book. What book? Oh, Ovid. You were still looking for that. Of course. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. I... It just feels like there are so many problems right now at the construction site. That reminds me. Could you tell Philip that I've come up with an idea how he can pay the workers? Oh. Uh, how? I'll buy up all of his wool and sell it on the fleece fair myself. But I need to go to Shiring first and get the money. Uh, all right. Um, I'll tell him. By the way, they have a copy of the Amores in Winchester. Oh? I think I know someone who might be able to get it. But first, we need to make sure Philip gets his money and talks to Percy. Who? Percy Hamley, the Earl. Percy Hamley, the fat oaf. Congratulations. Everybody heard you. So what? They're all bastards. I think I should be going. I think I should be going. Ah, oh, all right. See you later, Jack? Of course. Bastards. <laughs> You're gonna have to forget that word really quick, little brother. So for them, you've got money, Ali. So you were eavesdropping on me. Great. That deal with Philip will help them and us, Richard. Robert of Gloucester is advancing on Lincoln as we speak. Tomorrow we will ride from Shiring. And what I need from you is money for a new sword and a gambeson. And I want my shield painted in Stephen's colors. Is this leading anywhere, Richard? You've been doing this for years now. And has the king ever considered making you Earl of Shiring? Not yet. But I fought side by side with him before. He knows my name, Ali. Oh. Oh, all right. I will meet you in Shiring, and I'll bring the money.
Father Philip. Yes? Aliena says you can pay your workers. Uh, she has enough money to buy up all the Priory's wool and sell it in Shiring. And that way, you get your money earlier. Really? But you have to accompany her to Shiring. She has to fetch the money first. The sooner the better. I have to talk to Percy Hamley anyway. Thank you, Jack. Now you better get back to work. Tom wanted to talk to you. Oh. Have you seen Alfred? No, I haven't. Why did you pick a fight with him again? Uh, he, he started, started it. it. I heard that one before. He did! Do you have a moment? Of course. Take care for now. All right. You too. Yeah, if I talk to Tom now, he'll insist I stay at the construction site and work. Am I really done out here? I think I'll go and see Tom later. Yeah, if I talk to Tom now, he'll insist. Am I really? I think I'll... Yeah, if... am I really? Jack! What? <sighs> Come here, please. You wanted to finish your call bell, and I let you. Subprior me just told me you disturbed the monks in the scriptorium. Philip told me to practice reading. The Bible, not the kind of book you were looking for. Then you go and waste your time in the cemetery and the market and in the kitchen, and chatting to the Fullers. I made a balm for them. I wanted to help them. You should have been working instead. Don't you know how close we are to shutting down the construction? If I'd not planned ahead, it would all be over now. But how am I to plan ahead if I can't rely on you, Jack? What? Watch out! Whoa. Are you all right? Yes. Up here! Hey, hurry up, quick! What's going on here? Your son thinks I dropped the stones. You were the one who pulled them up, weren't you? Of course. That is my job. He was probably angry because he might not get paid. Alfred, stop it. What? Peter. What happened? I I'm not sure. 
but there was a monk. He was wearing a black robe. And when he saw me looking at him, he ran away. Maybe it was him. A black robe? Are you saying this was my fault? No, no. I'm sure I didn't recognize him. He wasn't from here. No. Peter dropped the stone and doesn't want to admit it. I assure you, a monk would never do such a thing. I don't believe him. Alfred is wrong. It was an accident. We need to be thankful that nothing happened. Already talking like a monk. What? Jack is right. Let's just leave it at that. What about the monk? We don't know that there was a monk. <sighs> Accidents happen. We'll check all the ropes to make sure there won't be another one. Excuse me, Philip? Philip? Hmm? I I'm sorry. Is everything all right? I was just thinking about my brother. Uh, what is it? Aliena is ready to go to Shiring with you. Then I must not keep her waiting. As we rode, Aliena expressed relief that Percy Hamley held court in Shiring Town during the Fleece Fair, and not in her father's castle. I had not yet confessed to Aliena that I blamed myself for her father's fate. I felt the guilt and shame starting to rise when we came to a large group of peasants looking as desperate as the refugees that had come from Earl's Castle back then. Philip stopped to talk to the peasants, and so did I. Of course he couldn't pass by people in need of help. Not even when he was on his way to try and save Kingsbridge from another attack by the Hamleys. Two of the peasants broke into tears and begged for food. Philip was mortified as they grabbed the hem of his robe and pleaded for mercy. They said they were from Wigley. They had illegally erected a mill and hadn't paid taxes to the Earl of Shiring for grinding flour. I bit my lip when they mentioned the title that used to belong to my father. As punishment, the Earl had destroyed their mill. Philip seemed unsure what to say about Percy Hamley's punishment for these peasants. I was less hesitant. I asked why they'd built an illegal mill. The peasants told us that milling taxes had doubled in their village. The peasants shouted and cried that the Earl had also burnt their fields, destroyed their houses, and taken their livestock from them. A few of them had even been killed. Philip told them to go to Kingsbridge for food. As we rode on, he said nothing. Maybe he had begun to lose hope that he would ever solve his problems with the Earl in Shiring. I had never trusted the Hamleys, but it seemed I had grown careless over the years. They had thus far kept their word to King Stephen, but now I felt I should have known that they would eventually break it. As I was thinking these grim thoughts, we passed by a gallows with two men dangling by their necks. An old woman stood by one of the corpses and snarled at us.
The old woman looked at us like a cornered animal. Philip demanded to know what had happened. She cackled and shook her head. She continued looking through the dead men's clothes. She'd already taken off their shoes and found a couple of coins on one of the corpses. Only now I realized that someone had tied foxtails to the corpses. Their hands had been cut off and their faces were burnt. I asked with a stern voice what had happened to the men. The old woman cackled and said that they had played with fire. When Philip asked that she should, by God, answer my question, she became serious. She told him that these men were poachers caught by the Earl's men hunting in his forests. Philip rode on, and when I caught up with him, I could see that now, more than ever, he was determined to talk to Percy Hamley. Aliena rode by my side without knowing that I had long been responsible for her family's fate, ever since I had made the mistake of trusting Waleran by God. I felt like a fly in a cobweb. Every move I made seemed to lead to further calamities. But then I heard Aliena as she sped past me. Shiring, she exclaimed. This is him. A face like that never changes. If anyone can get you an audience with the Earl, it's Sheriff Eustace. I hope Percy Hamley will show more understanding with us than he did with the people of Wigley. I'm concerned what kind of man Percy Hamley must have become to kill people for mere poaching. Good day, Sheriff. I must talk to the Earl. It's a legal matter of utmost urgency. Get in line, monk. Are they all waiting to see him? What did you expect on court day, monk? I fear this is going to take a while. I'll go look for Richard. Seeing that he's going into battle, he needs equipment. In the meantime, let's hope I can persuade the Earl to rethink this breach of our agreement. I'll talk to Meg about the sales of the Priory's wool as well. We will find a way to keep the cathedral's construction going, Philip, with or without the stone and timber they took from us. We must.
it is written in the book of Matthew. The end is upon us, but our Earl will lead us to salvation. Is that so? A hard hand for hard times. It will all make sense, you will see. No, he's talked himself into Things a rage. Things are taking place that will lead our generation to an end. Open your eyes. The signs are all around us. If they hadn't replaced Father, I could have helped them. Our food is rotting. Our animals dying. Our homes crumbling. That's not him. How many of you have fallen hmm. from grace? Good quality. By hell's demons. The wilting of Shiring is an omen of the things to come. But I'm not here to buy anything. And our Earl will be the new apostle to lead us to salvation when the end comes. Our Earl sees and our Earl... Daylight comes. robbery. We agreed on the price. Good to see you, Meg. I'm here to collect the money we've made so far. Um, excuse me. We're in the middle of something. What's the problem? Even you merchants have become thieves. What a rotten place this has become. He ordered the cartload of wool weeks ago. But now he refuses to pay the price we'd agreed upon. Let's think about why the prices are so high this year. So you can put more money into your pockets? Actually, the Earl has raised all fees. It costs more to pass the gate, to set up shop, to get a license, and to trade. I suppose. But the price is not as was agreed. <sighs> Did you use a tally to record the price? But, uh, are you with the Sheriff? Just who are you, woman? I am the owner of this business. Oh. Here's our Harfaliena. Now, would you kindly hand me your part of the tally? There are more notches on our part. Two pieces, two different prices. Granted, adding notches to our part would have been much easier. Aha! Uh -huh. You're admitting it. Mm, but the area with missing notches is thinner than the rest. You're right. It looks like something was carved off. Wh what? Are you saying I'm a fraud? Look, times are hard for all of us. I, I won't report you to the sheriff. <laughs> this wool will not make enough cloth for all of my master's servants' clothes. Let alone all the shirts he wants for himself. Whoever pays servants and wants to wear many shirts should be able to pay the price for quality wool like this. Quality? Yes, but it is not high quality. Now that you mention it, I see it. I cannot pay that much money for bad wool like this. No, he's doubting the quality. Fine. Then let me prove the quality of my wool. <coughs> Just you try. I'm taking my business elsewhere. Please, calm down. Three First you say one thing, and then you say another. Is this how you treat all your customers? I'll find an expert and prove it. I'm waiting. You're trying to rip me off. Let us work out a compromise. Three. Three. No, I'll I'm keep the wool. Give away for Outrageous. Free. Let's negotiate. Come on. I thought you had more to spare than that. That's not the price we agreed on. It is what we agreed on. Both of us. 
But we are not lost. We must prepare ourselves. What are you carrying there? Not for sale. Or eating. Don't steal! Go away! Oh, I, I didn't mean to upset you. Oh... Can I interest you in some horse bread? Is that the only kind you have here? It's the only one that hasn't gone green yet, I think. If you sell green bread, your customers will get sick and you'll get into trouble. What? Uh, are you with the sheriff? No, don't worry. Excuse me, do you know if something happened in Shiring? I know we suffer because of the war, but the town never used to seem this grim and hopeless. No, oh, we wouldn't know. We are but pilgrims in search of God's miracles. And a saint who will heal my foot. And my eyes. But yes, Shiring seems to hold no miracles these days. We heard the Earl is punishing his people for his own entertainment. I heard so too. Excuse me, would you care to give me your opinion on the quality of this wool? Of course. Please, show us. Oh, how wonderfully soft. And what thorough scouring. There isn't a hint of dirt or grease. The fibre is exceptionally fine, and the colour is even and light. Suitable for high-quality garments. I'm glad you think so too. Would you be so kind as to confirm this to a customer of mine, should the need arise? Of course. Just send them our way. With all these taxes and the shrinking markets, I wasn't sure whether visiting Shiring would still be worth it. But for that quality of wool, I'll say it is. Everyone seems to be afraid of Sheriff Eustace. I always heard he was a fat and lazy man. It's not him. It's the Earl. Killed a good friend for milling without permission yesterday. Buried him under the rubble of his mill. What? Shouldn't you make fresh bread? <laughs> if I could afford it. If you bring grain from outside the town, you must pay taxes nowadays. My friend's mill out there was a blessing. Sometimes he even let me use it for free. Which was why they killed him. And I can't afford using the Earl's mills here in town. What is the Earl thinking? Why is he hurting the business in town? I don't know. Better don't start asking questions around here. How is your pilgrimage going? Always moving forwards. And sometimes backwards. Because of my foot. Good luck with your pilgrimage. God bless you, good woman. Aren't you tired of Christian art? Their sad faces and dull colors are always giving me a foul mood. Just like this town. I agree. I'd prefer to see lush paintings of the fine things in life. 
Maybe I should start painting. What would your first masterpiece be? Hmm, I'm thinking fruits and decorative objects, arranged on a luxurious tablecloth. At least you could take your time with that. Fruit doesn't rot that quickly. Maybe I could sell my paintings at markets. <laughs> you haven't painted your first one yet, and you're already thinking about selling it. Would you be so kind as to conf- of Would you be free for a sales discussion later today? Ah, Lady Aliena. For you, I will always find time. I've heard business is slow. Not for me, it isn't. Plenty of knights need my services. His men have cleaned up well, I'd say. It suits me just fine that the Earl has swept the criminals off the streets. And those complaining about money and fees were never my customers or my friends. The town used to be much livelier. That's because the Earl and the Sheriff finally stepped up and got rid of all the thieves and cheats. I hope you're not stretching your wool before it's woven. I would never trick my customers. Good. Then you and me, we both won't get into trouble here in Shiring. Mm, I wouldn't be too sure of that. How much for a chainmail shirt? That's six pounds. Just for the chainmail? Well, I've got to make up for those taxes some way. Have you seen Richard and his knights? They came by and looked at a few swords, but they didn't mention where they were going. Have you seen a group of knights? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I saw so many people today. It's all right. Where did you get this? I'm not a thief. A man in the tavern promised me a bread crust if I fetch this from the market for him. I'm just taking a little break. You look hungry. Are you saying I should keep it? Nuh-uh. Thieves get hanged. I'll be good. Oh, of course. Do you have a family that supports you? My auntie sold flowers. But she couldn't afford to pay the taxes. Now I don't know where she is. I'm so hungry. Have you seen a group of knights led by a man named Richard of Shiring? No, we just arrived and headed straight for the church. Ah, still. Thank you. Have you heard of Richard of Shiring, the knight? Whoever that is, he surely hasn't bought bread today. Why don't you ask the sheriff? He seems to have his eye on everyone. I don't have any business in there now. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is upon us. Good day, Sheriff. Will these people have to wait much longer? If you have a complaint, talk to the Earl. I don't think he even recognizes me anymore. Shouldn't you be by the Earl's side to be his advisor? <laughs> Our Earl is no use for me today, but I think you'd be to his liking. As it is Go ahead and wait for your Matthew. turn. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, Sheriff. Speak to the Earl. 
Have you seen a group of knights led by a man named Richard of Shiring? You mean King Stephen's knights? No, last time I saw them, they were chugging beer at the Lion and Lamb Tavern. They're going into battle, so they'd better not fall in love tonight. How thoughtful of you. I cannot help them. Our food is rotting. Our animals dying. Our homes crumbling. Oh, has the queue not moved at all? We stand like pillars of salt. But I'm sure the Earl will accept petitioners soon. I hope it's before the workers at Kingsbridge leave the construction site because I cannot pay them. First you say one thing, and then you say another. Is this how you treat all your customers? There are Flemish merchants just a few streets away. They were very interested in my wool. And they would be delighted to confirm its quality to you. Anyone can let their friends lie for them. Then we'll leave it to the people. We'll sell the wool at the afternoon auctions. That way, it fetches a fair price for certain. No, 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 wait. Maybe we can negotiate. My master would not want me to leave here with empty hands. Competing with foreigners and nobility is no trifle. They're relentless and have deep pockets. Aliena. But if you prefer to take your chances. No, no, wait. I'm taking the wall, all right. I don't want to ruin you. My master can afford it. He just doesn't want to. And he has a temper. God damn it. You show no mercy, do you? <laughs> A pleasure doing business with you. Next time, he'll buy elsewhere, I'm afraid. A good merchant always strives for a deal that feels like a victory for both sides. Remember that. We don't need customers like him. And we have our money. Yes. And you have my thanks. W one more thing. Could you try to get Ovid's Amores for me when you travel to Winchester? It's a book. Yes. I can ask Brother Theobald. His book collection is more comprehensive than the church would like. <laughs> then he'll be the right one to ask. Thank you. No problem at all. Your wool may be of best quality, but that doesn't make up for this market. It used to be a place of fair trading once. This is definitely the last year I come here. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is You're trying us. to rip me off. What seems... She's raised... Is that... This place... If we had ever... You're right on... Um, ex... What's the... Even you... He ordered the... But now... Let's think of... So... Action... It costs... I suppose, but the price. Oh, did you use it? But uh, I am the owner. Oh. 
now. There are more not to pay crime. Mm. Is oh. look, times are. I, I won't. <laughs> this one. Let alone. Whoever. Quality. No, he's fine. <coughs> Daylight robbery. I'll take my business. You won't find a. I'm I'm taking my business elsewhere. Please calm down. Maybe another fleece on top. You're Maybe trying to rip me off. On top. Let us work out a compromise. Three. Three. What? No, don't go! Oh, where did you... Um, 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 you look... Uh, do you have a... Uh, Would you be... Uh, uh, that's... Uh, how, uh, how much... That's... Ja uh, have you seen... Hey. Can I interest... Uh, uh, if it's not him... Kill their... What? If I... I don't know... Excuse me. I, 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 good. Aren't you? T what would? You, uh, Maybe I could sell my. Uh. With all that. As it is written in the book of Matthew, the aha. Have you seen a group? There. If they, I. We. that will lead our generation to an end outrageous let's negotiate first you say one thing and then you and then you say another is this how you treat all your customers there are Flemish merchants just a few they were very and they would be delighted to confirm its quality to you Anyone can let their friends lie for them. Then we'll leave it to the people. We'll sell the wool at the afternoon. That way it fetches a fair price for certain. No, 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 wait. Maybe we can negotiate. Let's find a compromise. You buy the wool at the price we believe we agreed upon. Why would I do that? I will guarantee you first rights to my wool next year. The prices go up when more than one bidder is involved. I know, I know. My master would not be pleased if I returned without wool one day. He's got an awful temper. Fair enough. We have a deal.
I'll buy your wool at your price. A pleasure doing business. You've learned well. A good merchant always strives for a... I had a good... One more thing. Could you try to get Ovid's... Yeah, this book. <laughs> no problem. Pleasure doing... Likewise. Remember to come to the... I hope it's not going to be here in Shiring. You'd be... Pleasure doing... Pleasure do Look, remember to come to the next f I hope Pleasure doing business with you Pleasure doing business with you. Likewise. You Remember to now. come to the next. F I hope it's not. And a pig eat half of my crops. You thought the earl was bad before. No, Damn this chapters. money isn't meant to be spent. I have people uh, to support. How's your family? My father caught a cold. Gets sick from worrying too much. Same as me, why? Oh, how am I supposed to keep a family warm and fed like this? Patience is a virtue. Open your eyes! I don't have any business in there now. Our food is rotting, our animals dying, our homes crumbling. I'm astonished that you can still find trade in times like these. I can only repay you with my gratitude for now. And our priory's wool, of course. It should be enough to keep our workers around until I have solved our problems with Percy Hamley. But Tom said that without stone and timber, we will have to stop construction in a month. You must speak to the Earl. I still have to give Richard his money. But then I'll come and wait with you. From the looks of it, I'll be standing here for quite a while.
how many of you have fallen from grace, seduced by hell's demons? I have to give money to my knight. The taverner makes money with each tankard he sells. business slow well at least you still have your regulars even in bad times people drink the Earl of Shiren has imposed new laws and taxes and it makes times very bad for us what's your secret to success you know running a tavern people will give their last shirt for pleasant distractions Especially when they have a lot they want to be distracted from. Would you like to order? Oh, thank you, but I'm just here to see my brother and his men before the battle. Would you like to order? Oh, thank you. I don't have reason to disturb them. Today we ride to Lincoln. Drinks are on me. Taverner! Another round for everyone! You're the best, Richard. <sighs> it's Sir Richard. Nonsense. We're all brothers, right? It is Sir Richard. Oh. And here I thought you needed my money for new armor. Oh, I do. A knight is only as good as his equipment. Have you seen Alonzo's sword? With men-at-arms so well-equipped, how could I fight alongside King Stephen less well-equipped? And inferior armor may cost him his life. <laughs> Only the best for the best. Hey, you should be more responsible with our money. I spend it on my reputation. What's more responsible than that? Uh, you are paying for other people's wine. Some of whom you don't even know. Knighthood is about more than fighting, Ali. It's a way of life. We fight together, we drink together, we die together. Right you are. To hell and back we go. To hell and back. Alonso, you make that sound like a bad thing. But you could spend our money a little more wisely. Do you want William Hamley to become Earl of Shiring or me? Oh, what kind of...
kind of question is that? If we're lucky, then he will never return from the Holy Land. He already did. What? We ran into Robert of Gloucester's men. At first, I wasn't sure it was him. He wore the cloak of a crusader. No. Don't do it. Please. Have mercy. My God, please. Shh. Don't. And then King Stephen called out his name. William Hamley, join me. We ride. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to upset you. You what? This is not about you or me, Ali. Allowing the father of that monster to remain Earl would not only betray our father, it'd mean betraying everyone. William is a butcher, a filthy bastard without honor. Mind your tongue. You speak of the son of the Earl of Shiring. I am the son of the Earl. Sir Richard, your father went against our king and lost his title and his lands. You are not the heir to the title, not as things are now. What did you just say? Not easy. You treacherous bastard! Calm down. Do you want to slaughter each other and help the enemy? <laughs> Accusing me of treason. You're most loyal man at arms. Me or William, choose a goddamn side, Alonso of Toledo. Come on, choose! <sighs> you disparage me for stating the truth. I've always been your most royal man at arms, have I not? Do they often fight like that? Ah, oh, they're both very proud. Give them a few days, they'll get tired. They don't have that long. The one with the biggest mouth, too. I'm just trying to keep you grounded. How dare you imply that William and his fat father have a right to my land? An apology would solve this. I'm sorry. You see? There's nothing to it. I said nothing wrong. Now, now, can't I you just agree to disagree? Richard. Please. Good. At least there's one person I can rely on. My sister. I can't believe this. I'm sorry, but I can't let you go into war arguing like this. I asked for your money, not for your advice. Percy Hamley's title is a fact, not an opinion. It is not. He does not deserve it. This is not about who deserves what. The king appointed him. You should come to terms with that fact. <laughs> what did you just Obviously, say? Obviously, they have no idea how to settle a conflict without oh, a fight. No. I'm done talking to you. Huh, very much here. How would you solve a quarrel like the one over there? Everyone has their own way of coping with aggression. Food, gambling, or solace in the arms of a wench. Luckily for me, most resort to drinking. I doubt that'll work here. Don't say that too loud. Enjoy this. <laughs> Do you want to say something? Never. Can't we just forget about it? No. Are you just hungry? Are you serious? Uh, well, excuse me. <laughs> the taverner gave this to me. I don't want to ruin his business by giving it away for free. Uh. <sighs> 
<sighs> Do you want to say something? Never. Are you just Are you serious? Uh, well. No right thoughts enliven me while my stomach's hollow. You hear? <laughs> Fill us up. But you haven't had a right thought all day. <laughs> Maybe I'll be the next Earl then. <laughs> oh, that's awful. If they're hungry, they can order food. Would you like something to eat? I only accept food from Meg. She's a tradeswoman. And the food others throw at me is rotten. But she gives me good food. Meg is one of my best friends. Oh, yes? Then I accept. I'm so hungry. You're so nice. How can you afford giving some girl a whole slice of bread? I'm a tradeswoman. Oh. When I grow up, I'll leave Shiring and make lots of money too. So when I return, Auntie doesn't have to worry about bad men asking for money anymore. Bad men? Very bad men. Don't you think you should take that meat to its owner? Yes, I must. Just need a little break. Time to catch my breath. How would you settle a fight? If you're in trouble, run. Oh, but they're usually friends. Running wouldn't help. Then let them play a game to decide who's right. <laughs> Good idea. Want to say something? Never. Do you have any games? Board games have no place on the battlefield. You're just afraid to break them. <laughs> oh. any games for entertainment only what's needed to keep the customers here a little longer I can offer a set of dice I'm not in the mood for gambling Lady Aliena you're never in the mood for entertainment games of luck are a waste of time <laughs> can't we just forget about it no No, that... <sighs> no games here. Would you like to... Oh, thank you. <sighs> <sighs> Do you want to say something? Never. Any game? Uh, 
Divination is entertaining. Uh, you throw some sticks and they answer your deepest questions. Ooh, like what? If that person you like likes you back. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. Can't we just forget about it? No. Do you have any games with you? <sighs> Why would I take a g to get your? I don't need. Want to say something? <laughs> Never. Do you have any games? Um, not with me. How about you and your friends play hide and seek? Though the sheriff doesn't like that, so better not. <laughs> Thank you for the warning. games with you we carry the French game of fiers with us oh could I borrow it if you bring it back before nightfall I see no harm in it I, I will Now fight it out like real knights should, with a battle of wits. Playing a board game, uh, I don't know. You're scared I could win. Oh, let's begin. <laughs> now, let's start with a careful opening. Good choice. The general who gives in to anger will send his troops to their deaths. Exactly right, Ali. First, I'll focus on defense. Let's see what Alonso's got. Ooh. Well played. A classic opening move. Now's a good time to attack. Sometimes victory lies in numbers, but often it lies in a single soldier at the right spot, right? Yes, and I play to win. And here I stride to victory. <sighs> you reached the end of the board. What a crowning. I got a king. Hmm. You call this piece a king? In Spain, we call it a queen. She's quite powerful and has a mind of her own. All right, a queen then. Now I can sweep the entire board with her. No, don't be hasty. The highest art of war is to break the enemy without a fight. Nonsense, I have to seize this advantage. I've got a queen on my side. Time to rampage. When the Sovereign has been claimed, the game is almost decided. <sighs> I could fight to the last piece. But a good commander has foresight, and I can see this game is lost. I admit defeat. Ah, uh, you ended this before it even began. 
Even a scribe would struggle making this an epic of glory. This was about strategy, not showmanship. And it seems like Lady Aliena is an excellent strategic advisor. You work exceptionally well together. <laughs> he never makes compliments like this. He's the tactician. I trust his instincts and experience to guide him. But you yourself are an exceptional diplomat and businesswoman, I hear. You compliment each other in the way you think. I guess you're right. If you are wise enough to trust these queen's instincts in this matter, my friend, you too will indeed be able to take back the Eldom. You think we can do it? So, can I rely on your loyalty? <laughs> you can. Of course, we're brothers in arms. <laughs> Good. You've an important battle ahead of you. I'll bring you the money. You've done me a great favor. We are glad to hear it. Thank you for returning it. We always pass the time on our travels trying to best each other. to keep a family warm and fed like this. It's all... Pleasure... Like, remember to... I hope... Like, remember to come to... I... It's all too expensive. Fabrics. Good fabrics. Get them before... The fleeces used to be bigger. And that's not because it rains. Got to make up for those taxes somehow. Is your brother ready for the battle? I still need to give him... By all means. They say that Jack's father was a thief and hanged in Shiring. If that's true... Then he must have died the right of here. Shiring is an omen of the things to come. And our Earl will be the new apostle. Would you like to order? Oh, thank you, but I'm just... Good luck. <laughs> it's not about luck. Must be losing your touch if that's all you got. You're not the only one who needs my support. But what's more important than the oath we gave to Father? Kingsbridge. The people who took us in. Well, if I die in battle, you'll know why. Yes, 
because of your pride and stubbornness. Must you really fight? What is all this good for? For father, Ali. I will save Shiring from Percy Hamley. But who's going to save you? With men like these, I'm afraid I'm already beyond saving. For victory! For victory! For victory! I see. I wish you the best of luck. I'll be at the marketplace with Philip. And make more money, I hope. <laughs> Do you ever work? The Earl burned down the old man's mill. <laughs> no mill, no work. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to oh. I've seen enough. I don't have time to deal. The remains of Waylaren's castle. I have no need to go there. The Bishop's Palace. sees and our Earl acts. Have you finished your business? Yes. Glad to hear it. Philip, I now understand why our market at Kingsbridge has had more visitors lately. Shiring isn't what it used to be. Steep taxes and strict laws have taken their toll on the town. Is that so? These merchants would give anything to do their business at another fleece fair, but there's none nearby. They need a place with fair taxes, one that can put those taxes to good use. Are you thinking of a fleece fair in Kingsbridge? Are you thinking of a fleece fair in Kingsbridge? Call in the monk and the woman he's with. You, impatient monk. It's your turn. The girl, too. Me? What? Did you want me to come with you? No. We're not first in line, are we? Well, lucky you, then. Get moving. <clears throat> Philip of Gwyneth, Prior of Kingsbridge. The Earl of Shiring. Thank you for hearing me, old Percy.
Percy. Please allow me to introduce my friend, Aliena of Kingsbridge. I knew it was you. <gasps> oh, it doesn't sound like you missed me. I demand to talk to the Earl of Shiring. He has broken his word. You are talking to the Earl of Shiring. Bishop Waleran? The enemies of this earldom have taken Percy Hamley from our midst. Mother! Do you consider yourself a friend of the earldom of Shiring, Philip? Friend? That damned monk is drinking the blood of my earldom! It is not for us to damn them, Lord William. But judge them we must. What you are doing to the people of Shiring is shameful. Your father would have done well to teach you respect. The monk's a thief and so are you. And I don't take as kindly to thieves as my father did. Shiring will change. What crimes did we commit then? The king has never licensed a market in Kingsbridge. Your market is illegal, Philip. You are stealing my taxes by allowing my people to trade in your sorry priory, and you disrespect my authority! Is that true, Philip? I... I will talk to the king about this. You, your friends and your brother have always played by your own rules. But not anymore. Francis? Where is my brother? He got what he deserved. Where is he? Tell me! Fracture for fracture? Eye for eye? Tooth for tooth. The days of Kingsbridge Cathedral are over. Now leave. The next time I will show no mercy. I had assumed that as long as the market was held within the walls of the Priory and the taxes supported the construction of our cathedral, Kingsbridge would need no market license. I had made a foolish mistake. Now I had no option but to call on King Stephen for help. And as Aliena suggested, I joined the knights on their way north to Lincoln. <laughs> 